We are sitting here in the parking lot, an empty parking lot, of Magic Mountain. Now, Magic Mountain yesterday was the scene of a crime. We, uh, we came here yesterday before the races. Now, I apologize. Now, let me paint that picture. Magic Mountain is an establishment that is three stories, two stories. On the In the basement, there's this massive ballroom and climbing place and... Uh, yesterday we went to go in here and there was a lineup. I, I'd never seen such a thing before. So there's people coming out, coming out. If, if a bunch of people hadn't had just come out at the right time, we probably would have left. But a lar large group of people come out, so we walked in. The lineup to get tickets to go on the go-karts or play in the arcade was insane. And I knew that the ballroom was downstairs. Now Addie had spied the room downstairs and Ava, being a little troublemaker, had walked her towards the downstairs and as we walked down there, it appeared as if there was a large gathering, a large birthday party. But no one really working the door. So we walked in and joined the birthday party. Like we were in the birthday party. It's like that movie Wedding Crashers. We were birthday party crashers. There was little kids running around and we, we broke into a birthday party. So we uh, we stayed there for about an hour. <laughs> we stayed there for about an hour, and then we left and went to the races. So we were going to come back today and ride the go-karts. Now, it didn't dawn on me to look at the time the place opened. But me being me, you know, I want to be early. So um, we got here at 10, 15 for an 11 o'clock opening. <laughs> so we're sitting in the parking lot. I figured it would be a good time to run through my video. Uh, obviously... Yesterday wasn't without its ups and downs. It always is when you race 11 horses. Um, unless the first one is 11th and the rest of them finish better on the way up, you're going to have that roller coaster, and we certainly weren't without that. But all jokes aside, uh, all things considered, I'm looking at the numbers here. 11 starters, we had three wins, uh, two seconds, three thirds, and two horses that raced kind of poorly with very legitimate excuses. Now, I think a lot of people at Message think there was a little something with through Harry's Burn. Blue Monk was a little flat the other day. Um, uh, but don't believe me, just watch race good. And Tipsy and Dixie race good, so that's weird, right? And the the filly, the two-year-old filly out of that burn was sick last week, and then last night scoped a little bit of blood and a little bit of mucus. A little more, a little bit more of both than I would, uh, than I would like to see. So we're gonna have to address that over the next day or so. I'll talk to Harry, talk to the vet, and see what they want to do. I mean, if this is an allergy issue, you guys know where I'm going to lean. Give her the rest of the month off. Well, it's the 20th. That's not saying a lot. Give her till probably mid-August off and then start her back up. This is a filly we know is talented. Second and 57, come 28 in the mud. James, two or three, moved her that day. Uh, and then her next two subsequent starts were terrible. So, um, goes without saying, without me announcing this, you guys probably had a pretty good idea. One, that she was a little bit sick last night. Maybe didn't recognize um, the blood that was there. So how do we treat that? Because we can't keep bracing her and hoping, right, that she that she doesn't bleed. Uh, what path do we put her on? If, uh, if I speak to Harry and the veterinarian today and they believe it's as much or more allergies causing this than anything else, then it's simply a matter of giving her three, four weeks off, letting her lungs heal up and um, move forward. Now... The blood was a little frustrating. Is that something that we're going to need to put her on Lasix? I'm not ever ever going to um, lobby to put a two-year-old on Lasix, but it has happened in the past. West 52nd, yes, I believe. Uh, Oso Pine. I don't know about West 52nd, but definitely the first two were, uh, or I don't know about uh, yes, but the two first ones, Oso Pine and West 52nd, both ended up Lasix, on Lasix not too far from this time of year as two-year-olds. Ended up still racing. Um, I don't even know if... Oso Pine still on Lasex. I know, yes, set the world record without Lasex, and then three weeks later we had to put him on Lasex. So um, it's not it's not a category you move into and you don't get to leave, right? Lasex is a medication that, that uh, isn't forever. It doesn't need to be necessarily be forever. We saw Taimo Houdini come off Lasex last week, uh, and a number of horses come off Lasex. So it's not a, oh, well, now they're into that Lasex category. It's, it could be a short-term uh, help also. So, nevertheless, it's not something I want to lean towards with two-year-olds. But if the veterinary believe that that's what needs to happen, then so be it. So, that's better be sorry. We'll get some of the bad news out of the way first. You know, we'll get the other one out of the way, too. Um, uh, twinkle in her eye, scope a little bit of mucus, redness. Now, I know Johnny thought her feet were hurting her. I know um, 
uh, Deb, the caretaker, also did. We could apply some razor pads. My only issue is, will that take away from her overall ability to move forward? Can we block her feet? Or is it better to correctively shoe them? Um, it's not like we're late in the ball game, so I think we can. We can, and that's something we probably do this week. But last night, more, more or less, mucus, pimples, just allergy stuff, but not horrible. I would say if we're going to give a, a sliding scale out of 10 or 5, 1 out of 5, obviously 2 out of 10, uh, not something that's outrageous. But when you combine that with some, with some foot issues, a little bit of sore feet, um, then, yeah, you could get a result like last night. So, really, those were our only two bad results tonight. We'll get into the rest of the results right now. So admirable was fantastic again yesterday. Now I had a conversation with Mark Beck with Super Guy, really down to earth and understands all the the nooks and crannies of horse racing. He said, "Listen, this filly will never be worth more than she was today. Right now she's got to move up a class. She's not going to bully them like she has in that class, but she still could do good." He said, um, "So we can continue to race her, and I think she'll pick away, win one, two, three, whatever, do okay in those classes uh, that are up a little higher." Or you can look to sell her. He said, I'm torn. He said, I would always look towards selling them when they're at their uh, most valuable level. Um, you know, this is a filly that I don't think is going to be a, a Mohawk horse, a Meadowlands horse. She could do some damage around Saratoga, Yonkers, things of that nature. But um, what's her shelf life look like at the stable? Uh, I think I defer to the guy that has her right now. So when I have Mr. Beckwith saying, hey, you might want to list her on, on on gate. She's probably not worth any more than she would be right now. So uh, we might d uh, dive into that a little bit. I think probably list her at 32000 or whatnot. I think this isn't a filly we're giving away. Obviously, she's trending in the right direction. She's racing well. She's doing well. And she still does fit a number of classes all throughout New York. For that matter, she still fits the New York Sire Stakes also, which I don't think she's a player in there. Maybe the Excelsior B or A, certainly not Sire Stakes. Um, so, again might be uh, might also heighten her value. So I think in that regard, Mr. Beckwith is 100% correct. Now, we get into where we raced. We'll get the fares out of the way. We wear a line pole on the left of Luck of the Dragon. It looked like he was running out last night. So I think what we'll do is we'll either add a line pole to the outside or take both poles off, put a Murphy blind. We have things that we can do, but I think his steering last night cost him the front end and likely cost him the race. Um, I, I couldn't see, I don't know how your video was, when I tried to watch it on my phone, at the half it went really blurry and I couldn't really get a good view of what was going on. Now, I guess in fairness, uh, maybe I made a mistake in saying that he could have won, he was beat four lengths. I didn't get to see how it played out. Uh, they definitely made a mistake, they charged him with a break and he certainly didn't make any breaks last night. So, um, we'll aim for the, ne for the next fair, or grassroots with him, I think. Uh, Confederate Cruiser looked fantastic last night, just jogged. He's going to turn into a nice little horse. I think both of them could. Now, the reason you didn't see Procrastinator there was Procrastinator is in at Scioto Downs on Thursday with the, with the, hey, hey, we're going to bring him down with the three-year-old fillies. Uh, Addy, Addy Bear, don't do that, sweetheart. Um, so, um, as we sit here waiting for the amusement park to open up, on Oliver's birthday, nonetheless, we crashed someone else's birthday yesterday. Today, we actually have a birthday. What's wrong, sweetheart? What do you need? She wants Papa. Papa. Uh, Addie, for the first time in her life now, Addie's two and a half years old. For the last year, all she would watch was Spirit, the, the horse, the Spirit Horse show. Now, she switched over to Peppa, uh, which is annoying. really annoying. Uh, really, really annoying to hear the pig snorts every five seconds, but <laughs> now we'll turn it down to a level she can manage. It's fine. Okay, good. Uh, because the pig snorts are really annoying. But uh, whatever, she's happy and everybody's uh, everybody's happy. So big day for us, obviously. We got a lot in the go. For me, I'm staying in Columbus as very late as I can, driving straight back to the farm. Kirby and Jason will have the truck loaded up. I'm going to actually take the truck and trailer to Batavia. A lady had called me yesterday and asked if I could ship two of her horses to Batavia. Can you turn that down just a hair? Just a hair. Um, Oliver, just a hair. Just turn it down. Just a little bit, Addy. Just the pig snorts are killing me. They're killing me. No, Addy, Ava, Ollie can do it for it's you. under the phone, right here. There. Um, so I'm going to take this lady's three horses to Batavia for her, no problem at all. Anytime we can do something for other people, it helps because we always need help getting here, getting there, shipping a horse there overnight. 
Um, so anytime somebody calls and looks for some help, we're certainly going to. Uh, so I'm going to ship three horses to Batavia at 2 o'clock. That should get me to Batavia at 3.30 p.m. Uh, first trip for Bomb Hugger is 6 o'clock. I got a, a wonderful picture yesterday from Ryan Swift, who is the trainer of Bomb Hugger today. Uh, nice bubble bath for her and said she ate all her breakfast and she's feeling really good. So expecting good things out of her. Now back to yesterday. So Emerald was great. We described that. I am going to put uh, So Emerald on... Uh, on gate, I'm going to price her at thirty-two thousand dollars. We'll probably, you know, is that is that a flexible price? Yes. Turn that down, please, Addie Bear. Yeah. She's getting it. She's getting it. She's figuring it out. Help her figure it out, Ollie. It's so funny watching her do stuff now because she start. She understands. Other way, it's okay. She understands a little bit. Um, so so admirable. Now uh, we watched, as I said. Uh, Confederate Cruiser crushed them and looked very, very good in winning. And Luck of the Dragon raced uh, pretty good also. I think he paced 2-1. Two, 2-1. Two two, one. Two, one, two, one. So he raced good. Uh, the reason that, as I said, Procrastinator's not in, he's coming to Scioto on Thursday. I would rather race him on a 5 eighths, which he's never seen in his life. He's never seen anything other than a half-mile track. So to bring him uh, to Scioto would be a step up for him. He'd be very happy to do that, I'm sure. How long is what do you mean, sweet? It's five eighths mile track, so you start on the back stretch, go around once, and finish on the like the meadows. Like the meadows, you finish in front of the stands. Whereas a half mile track, the turns are tighter. You start at the point, you go around twice and end. Now a mile track, you would only go around once. And seven eighths, like Mohawk, you start a little bit down the stretch, one eighth of a mile down from the start, and then finish an eighth of a mile later, which is seven eighths yeah, mile track. Yeah, I see the gate take off on the opposite side of the stands. That's because it's a five eighths. So, uh, so Confederate Cruiser, we're having a good day so far, right? So admirable jogs, luck of the dragon second, uh, and I go out with Sweet on Pete. And, uh, you know, it's tough to be very confident with two-year-old trotters, two-year-old trotting fillies especially. It's tough to be super confident when you're driving them. But I really thought this filly would win. You know, I, you can't always tell the competition, but she just trains so good. She's just turned into such a nice horse. I just didn't think there was a way to beat her. And I knew the only one I thought could beat her on the program was right on my back. But I just let her saunter along. She's so smart now. You know, I could have been over the half in 104. I just let her float along. I let her pick up speed down the back stretch. I didn't want to let anybody else get up into my grill just in case. So I let her trot down the back stretch. Brett moved over, and I really thought there was a shot he could beat me maybe for a second. Then we come out of the turn, and I just, uh, I just tapped her on the tail. What are you doing back there? I just tapped her on the tail, and she was gone. Just drove away. Uh, we were really smoking the last little more than an eighth, and Sweet on Pete was sprinting like a much smaller horse. She is a big, big girl, and for her to pick up speed like that was impressive. So a um, little bit of an update. I know the people that were really concerned had already know. They asked, I'm going to race Sweet on Pete in the Ohio Breeders' Race coming up. Uh, I think we'll race two or three horses in it maybe, or maybe one. We'll see. There was another filly that impressed me last night, but... Um, most definitely Sweet on Pete is trending as I said with the other horse too trending in the right direction and definitely doing very very good things for the stable uh, so that was so admirable Sweet on Pete both winners Luck of the Dragon finishes second we went with eyes of 10 as I went with eyes of 10 Confederate Cruiser has won the race and just jogged so we're riding a pretty good high uh, Blue Bayou deal again runner up the inside fished her out late She's on her way here to Ohio. We're going to race her, I think, in Kentucky in the grassroots division there. They go for 20000 I believe. Uh, I think uh, it's not open yet, honey. It opens at 11. Those might be people that work here, too. Huh. So um, so now Isa 10 goes out. I don't know how she'll be. You know, Amy had just asked me when we pulled in. She's getting a little warm. She said, is she, why is she getting hot? I said, she's not getting hot. She's getting frustrated because she, in her mind, is as fast as everybody else and I believe in her body is as fast as everybody else. But the mathematical way that she's put together, she's striking her knees, causing her to touch her jacks, and it's really, really starting to frustrate and anger her. So uh, quite frankly, and, and I want to talk to everybody about this, I think the best thing to do with Isaac 10 is turn her out. There's nothing wrong with her. Nothing wrong with her. And I know a lot of people don't want to hear that we paid $45,000 for a horse that made $6,000 and we're turning her out. I believe, and there's two very important reasons for this. I need everybody to pay attention to what I'm about to tell you. She will grow up. 
and that striking the knee will turn into brushing the knee or maybe not even hitting the knee, but you need to let her mature. And the bad habits she's about to get and learn, honey, sit back. The bad habits she's about to learn because of these things frustrating her could impact negatively impact the rest of her career. I think if we keep her in the frame of mind where she believes she's the best horse on the track, where she believes she's very fast, and not let it get to a point where she's getting disheartened, where she's getting depressed about going on the track because she can't beat those other horses. If you watch her race closely last night, I never gave her her head the whole way down the lane. The two are way ahead, and I got a big hold of her because I want. I knew I was going to be third. I just wanted to rate her for third. I knew I couldn't catch the front two, and she was striking a knee. She was striking at herself. That will dissipate. It's not like she's put together like... You know, like the what's what was the guy with the crooked arm from the mashed potatoes? <laughs> what was the what was the scary movie? Yeah. Scary movie with the guy with the mashed potatoes. She's not put together like that. She's she's just put together to hit herself and she does. But as she grows up and mature matures, she won't she won't do that anymore. So for those of you out there saying, Oh, she's a very fast filly, that will, I believe, turn into be a very fast filly. But at the same time, um, you got to give her time. You got to give her space. You got to give her room to grow. And that's exactly what we are going to do with uh, so eyes of 10. So she stands like this. It's, it's normal to think that she would touch a knee, right? Her brother stood the same way. Lawmaker stood the same way. He wasn't all twisted around, but he stood just like that. And he went over his knees and never touched, but he was taller than this filly. So let's let her grow up. Let's let, her, let's let her go out to the field with that frame of mind where she is a fast filly, where she wants to beat up on horses. And then let her body... Let her body catch up to the rest of... Uh, you know, to the rest of her. So, uh, that's the plan for Isa 10. You know, I, I think she raced well last night, trotted in two minutes. I think she's more than capable if I push her and push her, trot 58, which is good for a two-year-old right now. But at the same time... I think by not pushing her, by saying, okay, girl, just relax. You had a good race. You finished third. Turning her out in the field and letting her grow up, letting her fill out, letting her spring up. I think what you'll see is an extremely effective three-year-old. So what I'm asking you is to understand, I want to pull the plug on Isa 10 uh, for 2021, only because I think we have an incredibly good-looking filly for 2022. I've been down this road before, and if you continue to let them race when they're smacking at themselves, Unless they're really built bad and you just like there's nothing you can do, um, you know. I joke at Amy calling her little Leroy. I had a horse I loved, Leroy's Dream. I tried to race him at two. I raced him maybe ten, twelve times. He ended up being an okay racehorse, but that grittiness that he had at two, it dissipated as we went along, and it turned into well, you put me in a position to win, I'll win, but you you don't. There's no need for that. I think this is a very wall bred very durable, tough filly that loves to work and really wants to do her job well, let's give her the opportunity to do that. So I think turning out eyes at 10 is the smartest thing to do. As I said, Blue Bayou Deal was third race good. She's coming over here. Um, I'll save the best to last. Uh, Skippy. Now, uh, one, two, Skip, if he was in the 12th, was in the 12th last night. I guess we'll jump into Don't Believe Me, Just Watch, finished second. I'm pretty clear what happened there. The guy stuffed Travis in the two hole, walked in his face. I don't think you're, anybody was going to beat the one that won it in 53 or 54, but Don't Believe Me, Just Watch, watch race good again to finish second. He continues to race good. Then we had Skippy in the 12th. You know, uh, one, two, Skip, a few always ran in real bad. Roller Burr, Murphy Blind on left, Gating Pole on the left. Um, the last week, she's been less on the right line and a little bit on the left. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? You might say, oh, she's getting sounder. She's not on the right line anymore. What if she's getting a little pinchy on the left side and compensating? So um, we had her ch we changed her shoes around a little bit. We trained her last week. I raced her. I couldn't get her away from the gate at Northfield Park. She wasn't quite great. But once she got up into the race, she finished up well. She trained great the other day coming into the race. I went to warm her up last night. Gee, she's not. A now we're going to a bigger track. She's not on that right line bad anymore. In fact, she's running out to the, in the straightaways to the point where she gets rough, more rough than usual. We're going to have to call an audible. Took the Murphy blind off the, last si uh, off the left side, put the little pole on the left, and moved the gating pole. In the post parade, I moved the gating pole from the left side to the right side. The reason being, I needed to keep her butt straight so she didn't interfere with herself 
and make a break. If I can't get her into the race, you're not getting any money. You're not going to the winner's circle. If I can get her into the race and I can show this horse a path to the winner's circle, I know she'll get there because she's a winner. She wants to be a winner. Nine holes tough at Sayota. Gate moves very, very fast. I kept her up on the gate. Coming out of the gate, it looked like we were going to cross over. She got out of gear like she was going to run. You just got to leave her alone. You know, number one rule of driving trotters, especially young ones, is keep them trotting. So I uh, kept her trotting, got her out of there. I knew once I got to the turn, I could let her accelerate. I snapped out around the horse in the two wide path and um, snapped out around the horse around the two wide path. What are you doing? Imagine that. I'm going to get in line. Okay. Okay. It's a giant place. There's like 18 people in line. I think once they open the door, we'll just all walk in. Hold up and let a bunch of yeah. What are we gonna do with them, Addie Bear? Huh? Uh, I'll bring her in. Just go wait in line. So, um, Skippy, close the door, Ava. Ollie, I gotta, I gotta put these. Ava, back. close the door, honey. Um, Ava, right now. So one, two, skip a few. When we got to the turn, I got to snap her out around the horse in the two wide path and have come at Josh Sutton with a full head of steam. Josh Sutton's a favorite. I'm like five to one. I'm legit. She's a nice filly, but I got to make sure he understands that it's probably in his best interest to let me go. If I give him every any chance or she gives him any chance to maybe park us, who knows what happens. So uh, powered her to the front. It was pretty clear Josh was going to remove. She got everything her own way in the two hole. I wish around the last turn, I could have backed out onto Chris, uh, onto Chris Page's back. I thought to myself, I think she would be better down in the passing lane. Footing seemed good down there. I think I could get her down in there, correct her, and have her trot forward. In hindsight, I wish I had just floated out into the three wide path. I think I'm a winner if I get to the three wide path. I opted for the passing lane and I got beat. But she raced so, so good. She is such a tough, intelligent, focused, determined horse. I cheer for her every time, not just because I'm driving for her, not just because I'm a partner on the filly also, but because I love this filly. She wants to do everything right so bad, and she, she wanted to win last night. She raced so hard right to the wire, raced good, finished second out of the nine hole. That was a tough, tough trip for her and just showed how, how very, very durable she is. Now, a lot of people are waiting to see what's Anthony going to say about Hill of Magic. What's Anthony going to say about what took place. So I, 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 if you asked me last night, I would have been very irate. I would have been very blunt about what I thought took place last night. So here's the thing. One, probably shouldn't run over wheels. That's number one. Um, now look at my frame of mind going into the race. We've made some huge changes with Hill of Magic. They were on display and pretty evident last night. But I couldn't guarantee, I couldn't tell you with any certainty she would be great last night or good, and she was. I leave her on the front, probably a winner. Definitely second at very, very worst. Here comes Jimmy Smith out of the seven hole driving his own horse. Probably the first mistake. So Jimmy leaves out of there. I know he's a long shot, but hell, I'm a long shot. You know, I really only got him. I only need anybody to be able to trot in front of me, you know, give me some cover. And, and take me to where I need to go, right? I know that Chris Page is waiting and it's Annette Lawrence's horse, I know. And in my mind, I watched Ryan Stahl's horse race last week. Um, the gentleman at Northfield trains her toes in the water or something like that, Ty Lloyd, thing's a freak. It could be racing in the, in the sire stakes. In my mind, unless something happens, I'm not beating him. I look over my shoulder, I'm pretty sure I see him back there. You're not beating that guy. But maybe, who knows, it's a horse race. So I can't remove it 30 to 1 on her on her lines. And I have it's not like I schooled her in 58 and I know she's gonna be better. When I trained her the other day, I told you guys I think she's better. I think she's much better. But her lines were fair. 20 to 1 morning line coming off what you can see on paper is a fair estimation of the odds of that filly. So I uh, I don't remove. First off, I let the guy go. You know, find a hole. You're eight trillion to one. Find a hole somewhere in there. Maybe there wasn't one. I don't know. I see him coming. I could have parked him. I said, I'm not going to burn up this filly and prove she was supposed to be 20 to one by parking the 50 to one shot. So I let him go. I don't remove. We wait. Here comes Chris Page first over. He doesn't even get me into the backs. He is done 
three steps starting into the back stretch. And I mean done, done. Like plummet through the field like Halley's Comet, done. So I'm looking for an escape. Nobody's throwing you any life rope. The toes in, toes in the water filly comes charging at Chris Page. I have a blink of an eye. And even as I came out, Mr. Tharps driving the horse, uh, Randy Tharps, hey, 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 he doesn't want me coming out, right? And it was tight, but I did have room to come out. But as I come out, I clipped, and I did clip his wheel. Everybody's saying, oh, you didn't hit his wheel. Yes, I did. I flattened his tire. That was me. But that happens all the time. Maybe more with me. I don't know. But people get tires flattened all the time. Yes, it's it's against the rules. Yes, I caused this horse to be beat 30 lengths instead of 21. You were done. You were ninth regardless. And this is where I get frustrated. I saw him pull up to the gate. Now, I can't say with all certainty that he went to the phone, that he said to the starting car, hey, guy flattened my tire. I know he did. Because when the inquiry went up, they never called him to ask him if he did. You would think if there was an inquiry, Anthony, on Jimmy Smith, who would you call? They didn't call me. Never picked up the phone. They never said Anthony McDonald to the phone. They never said Jimmy Smith to the phone. They just started flashing the number. You're telling me they saw my horse's left front foot clip that tire as I was getting out of the hole? Come on now. I'm going to call shenanigans. Without any evidence at all, because I don't want to talk to him, I probably never will again. But I'm going to go out on a limb and say that Jimmy Smith pulled up to the gate and said, that Anthony McDonald flattened my tire. Meanwhile, maybe it didn't dawn on that that's the same Anthony McDonald that you that let you go when your horse plummeted through the field in front of everybody. That's the same guy. But whatever, that's fine. That's your prerogative. Running to the phone to say somebody flattened your tire is the equivalent of saying, teacher, he's spitting spitballs at me. You were going to be ninth anyway, man. You know what? Come up and say, hey, sorry for backing you through the field. Hey, no, I'm sorry I flattened your tire. Let me go get you another tire and tube. Really sorry about that. That's how that conversation should have and could have went. Not run to the principal's office. But anyway, it's neither here nor there. I'm happy. You know, maybe he's happy. He cost me 2000 or whatever he cost me. You know, cost us. Maybe, maybe that made his day. I, I don't know. It won't happen again, I can tell you that. It won't be the last tire I flatten, but I guarantee you it'll be the last tire of his I ever flatten. So, um... You know, the Magic Race, great. A few more little things we got to tinker with her. Man, she's a finicky filly. She went from being, how is this filly this disgusting? And it's not like we scoped her and, like, oh, she's sick. We scoped her and she was fine. This was all mechanical. Changed her shoes. Um, changed her shoes around. Changed some equipment. Different horse. No, you guys can go back and look at the race. If I stay on the front end, I'm one, too. If I get out cleanly down the back stretch, I'm one too. As it was, I kind of had to force my way out, caused a little mayhem, and was still just beat a nose to the point where Chris Page thought I was second. Now, we still got a few little things I saw, still saw a few little minor things we can change with, um, with our girl, and we will change them, and she will be much, much better for it. So, Hill of Magic went from, how is this horse this bad, to... She's okay. She's pretty good, this filly. So I think uh, we have one who's resurrected from, from the ashes of racing, so to speak, to become a nice filly. So Sweet on Pete, I thought, was absolutely tremendous yesterday. You know, not to take anything away from so admirable. Uh, Sweet on Pete was tremendous. Um, Confederate Cruiser looked very, very good. 28-4 and four on, a, on a little farm track last quarter. Uh, big mile for that horse. He looked good. Um... Eyes of 10 did everything she could. Probably could have done more and I didn't want her to. And as I said to you, and I outlined it very, very clearly why I want to pull the plug on Eyes of 10. Nothing detrimentally to do. No uh, no reason to do it other than I think she needs to get bigger and stronger. And the only way to allow her to do that is to let her grow. Grass is good right now. Nice and green. You know, two, three months off for this filly. I'll gamble. You want to dump your shares, go ahead. I'll gamble on Eyes of 10 because I think her breeding and her intelligence and her desire and work ethic will bubble through as a three-year-old. That's as plain as I can put it. 
Um, one, two, skip a few. She just showed how goddamn tough she was. She is such a nice little filly, and I just love being around her. I certainly love driving her. Um, and then, and then uh, obviously, Hill of Magic showing... I was so befuddled and, and shocked how bad she was her last two, three. Then to see her come out and behave like this last night just really, really impressed me. A big mile from her. Very, very impressed from her. So, uh, for her. So, uh, it wasn't a perfect day. I did get tossed with Hill of Magic, placed ninth. I'm going to get fined 200. It's not the end of the world. Um, the two fillies in Ontario scope sick. They'll be all right. They'll bounce back. I, I would like to give... Uh, better be Sawyer uh, at least a month off we're gonna have to let those lungs heal up and that's not a bad thing make no mistake I don't go into it all the time in detail but this is by no means the first horse that we had bleed uh, anytime you have this high level exertion and you have a compromised airway whether it be redness soreness inflammation and or mucus you always have run the risk of seeing the seeing blood there so it's just a matter of treating her up and making her right I do want to have a very uh, direct conversation with the vet and with Harry is this the type of two-year-old that may need to go on Lasix we don't have them very often but they are present in racing and they are present here um, and if they, it is then fine she's gonna get three four weeks off regardless if that leads to Lasix and it leads to Lasix I think I'll defer to the vet on this but I do want to have a very a uh, very clear conversation about her uh, to the veterinarian and say, okay, what are her options? What do you see? What did you see last night in the scope? Do you think that amount of mucus generated is equivalent to generating that amount of blood? Was it compounded from when she was sick last time? Maybe she wasn't completely over it. These are all questions I have to talk to the vet about. But um, uh, regardless, I think three, four weeks off for her, and that will be fine. There's still lots of racing left for this filly all year. And then when it comes to the other filly, I think it's a combination of her feet maybe need addressed. And again, cleaning and drying her up. This is the time of season for this. Uh, feet alone could do it. That compounding effect with uh, the mucus and redness and a little bit of, little bit of pimples could easily uh, equate to what we saw in the race line and in the race last night. So, uh, two explainable but poor performances yesterday. Um, one unbelievable disqualification and then uh everybody else raced awesome so great day there uh again i think we have six going today i know the ones i'm going to be focused on time of houdini goes italian grit goes uh somebody else does where's that book here it is i wrote it down i know we have the two horses in philadelphia time of houdini west 52nd and italian grit now i'm listed on west 52nd anybody who is aware of the space time continuum knows that i can't be in two places at once so I believe Tony Hall is going to drive West 52nd. I will be at Batavia. I thought they raced in the afternoon, but they don't. They race at night. So I'll be at Batavia this evening with Bomb Hugger. This afternoon starts off with Rose Above It racing in uh, racing in the uh, Stallion Series in Philadelphia, and then a more Diener eight to five morning line. I want to keep an eye on this guy, man. He raced great last week. So that is your update. I'm glad I waited till this morning to do it. I was a little heated last night. I was a little chippy. So I'm happy that I woke up. It's it's Oliver's birthday. We are at Magic Mountain. It is going to open up in two minutes. It's going to open up. And then we're going to ride some go-karts for an hour or so and then head back to Northfield. So I hope you guys had a great day. I hope everything worked out well for you. It was a really, really good day for the stable. Nine out of 11 in the top three. Not too shabby, I don't think. So uh, with that, I will bid you adieu. And I will talk to you all very, very soon.